Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back taking our first look at the Italian destroyers. Tonight we are taking a look at the tier 5 Avietti. At least that's the closest I got to it. From what I understand, if I just look at the, the word itself, it looks like aviary, right? Which refers to birds. So maybe this has something to do with bird or flying. Let me know down in the comments below. But uh, I do like the name, uh, even though it's not necessarily the most uh, ship-worthy name in the world. But uh, yeah, I digress. Let's get right into the commander. Now again, I don't necessarily recommend using Giuseppe Sagala Fogosi on these ships, but early on it worked for me. Um, I only used this commander up until the tier 7. Um, then I actually started experimenting because I was struggling with the tier 7. Um, and that's when I realized Luigi Rizzo is probably your better bet. Because I use the SAP on these things more than anything else. He, he buffs that. Um, so let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. But without further ado, let's get straight into Giuseppe Sagala Fergosi. We're running Eric Bay, Jersey Swirsky. As always, you guys know my play style revolves around being super aggressive, going straight for the enemy destroyers, uh, and s being sneaky to do so is definitely useful. Um, off also, I'm running Contact as Imminent, Flank Speed, uh, Perceptive, and Sidestep. Okay. We are also running Unstoppable. Now, as I stated yesterday, if you really wanted to, you could run, rather be torching, get a little bit more fire chance, right? But, swap this contact as imminent over for quick fix. You do that, you still have your limited mobility while your engines are damaged, that you get for Unstoppable, except you also end up getting the legendary perk that you want. So that would be the one, the one main reason I would choose Giuseppe over uh, Rizzo, or Fulgozi over Rizzo. All right, so just a thought. And again, I don't even have this commander ranked up all the way, so keep that in mind too. Like, if I do rank a commander up, it'll probably be this one, uh, just because this one does have that. But the other one has the SAP, and I think I've already ranked him up. So uh, keep that in mind. Now, if we look at the ship, obviously, we are running Aiming Systems Mod 1. You have uh, a lot of guns. You want them to hit the target, especially in the knife fights. So definitely going with Aiming System Mods 1. And then we also have Propulsion Mod. Uh, I do a lot of starting and stopping with these destroyers. Uh, so Propulsion Mod is an absolute necessity. Okay. Now, we are fully upgraded, as always. We are running the Italian Unity flag because if you just squint your eyes just enough, it does kind of look like a Spartan helmet, though, let's be honest, uh, it's not. <laughs> Type 4 camo uh, because extra sea detectability as well as incoming fire dispersion, which starts to get important as you uh, get up these higher tiers. Uh, we're not running any boosters. We do have the engine boost consumable and exhaust smoke generators. Now, again, the one thing I want you to make sure that you guys understand is the engine boost consumable for these Italian destroyers is only 25 seconds long. I mean, that's awful, okay? To put that into perspective, if we look at literally any other destroyer line, let's pull out the uh, Americans, for instance. If we pull out the Americans and look at the Tier 5 where you at? That's six. There it is. Mayhem. We look at your loadout, look at your engine boost, and you get 120 seconds. But look at the difference in maximum speed. That is the biggest difference. The Italian destroyers have a plus 25% engine boost, whereas most other destroyers are like plus eight. Okay. Uh, if we want to actually, like, if we really want to get into it, let's just pull that off. Uh, let's look at any of the other ones. Um, the one that comes to mind for me would be probably the Russians, because I, I seem to re recall them having some pretty good engine boosts as well. So if we look at this and go to engine boost, that's uh, still plus eight. So maybe that is, maybe the Italians are, somebody's going to have to look into it. I haven't looked at all the nation's, uh, things because it isn't something I normally check out, but it is something that stands out with the, uh, the Italians is that it is very short duration engine boost. 
but it's very good engine boost. You get a 25% um, engine boost power, okay? So that is not insignificant. That's three times better than everybody else, or at least from what I've seen, okay? So back on the Aviarity, uh, we are going to look at our specs for survivability, 14,300 hit points. And uh, one thing I want to do, I do want to point out is um, early on, these things have a decent amount of hit points but as you go further on they don't ever get any more hit points like if you look at the kuna Verity, um 16,000 you get an extra 2,000 hit points so you get like 1,000 hit points per per tier um that's not particularly amazing to put that in perspective now i know you can buff this uh, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna like beat around the bush there you can absolutely if you want to spec into a survivability build go with a little bit more uh, uh ex or hit points there if you want and you can make that respectable get you up to probably 20 to 21,000 uh, hit points which is not an insignificant boost to what you start with so probably a good idea there if you're into um, mid-range gunboating which that is pretty much all you're going to get out of this thing because you don't really get the far range out of these these things and honestly I don't know if you'd want to get a far range out of these things anything up to 10 kilometers uh, you can reliably hit uh, but the the shells are a little slow so getting beyond that 10 kilometers could be a bit of a tricky tricky gambit but anyway i digress speaking of the 120 millimeter 50 caliber and saldo 1940s you get a one by one configuration but you also get the 120 millimeter 50 caliber and saldo 1937s that is in a two by two configuration wait what what do you mean, Spartan? I mean, you get five guns on this ship, which is very, very nice, especially for the tier. So firing range is 10.9 kilometers. Again, that going out to 11 kilometers is, is nice. You could extend that if you wanted. Uh, but again, I don't know how useful it'd be. Maybe against battleships uh, with HE spamming, uh, you could go a little bit further out uh, and reliably hit. But I think everybody else you'd be struggling to hit. Uh, re reload time on this 6.8 seconds uh, it's a little bit longer but again you do get an extra gun so it does kind of make up for it the 180 degree turn time and I know a lot of people were pointing this out uh, in yesterday's video 180 degree turn time is not the greatest so maybe buffing the uh, the turret traverse would be better and by that they mean by going in here and instead of running perceptive running uh twist and track right well we don't actually have twist and track on this this commander but you do on the other one but then you lose the uh damage uh reduction you know what i mean and i think the damage reduction comes in a lot more handy than having your torp or your your guns uh because it's still destroyer gun traverse so it's not the worst it really isn't you, you as long as you know how to use your ship you should be fine uh, maximum HE shell damage 1700 with a 7% chance to set fires and maximum a uh, SAP shell damage is 2600 torpedoes you get the same 533 millimeter tor uh, tubo lancia celery that's a mouthful reload is 80 seconds maximum damage is 10,000 the detectability is 1.1 kilometers they go out to 10 kilometers and they go 60 knots so very slow, but decent range, and very, very, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, anemic damage output. That would be the word. Uh, not only do, are these anemic in, in damage, but they're also anemic in ability to cause flooding. Um, you don't always cause flooding with these. It kind of reminds me of the Germans in that, re that uh, respect. If you've ever played the Germans and run like Mosquito... Uh, where you reduce the damage but increase the reload time but the difference being with the germans you can get that reload time sub 60 seconds you don't get that with these and you only get six of these so i don't know the torpedoes and then i then on top of that you also get that ridiculously bad rear torp angle which is just insanely bad like really bad all right aa defense 13.2 millimeter 76 caliber Breda 1931s. You get six of those doing 17 damage per second, reaching out to 1.2 kilometers. Then you have 20 millimeter 65 caliber Breda 1935s. You get four of those doing seven damage per second, reaching out to a whopping two kilometers. Then the 37 millimeter 54 caliber Breda 1939s. You get two of those 
doing a whopping 18 damage per second and reaching out to three and a half kilometers. It's tier five. You still don't have AA. So uh, be prepared to be annoyed at carriers because they just never go away. Maximum speed, though, without the engine boost, 39 and a half knots. Turning circle radius, 570, with a rudder shift time of 4 seconds, so pretty solid. A little bit slower than the previous uh, rudder shift, but still a pretty solid rudder shift, and uh, one that I think most people can get behind. Uh, concealment, again, not good. Detectability by C is 6.3 kilometers, again, not good. And that's with a full concealment build, you still got 6.3 kilometers surface detectability. So, again, it doesn't give you much of a buffer when you're coming in. But that's why you have your engine boost. That's why you have your, your smoke screen to close the distance. You know with perceptive the direction of the enemy destroyer. So the goal is to close the distance, get up close and personal, and ruin the destroyer before they have a chance to turn and run. However, if you catch somebody who is turning and running, um, it's going to be struggle bus for you because they're going to be able to outspot you by a full 1.3 or 1.5 kilometers, uh, which feels very, very Russian destroyer-esque. Now, I will say this. These things can absolutely bounce armor piercing uh, off of the sides. So if you angle properly and people are shooting armor piercing at you, there is a chance that you can actually bounce those shells but I wouldn't rely on that. You definitely want to try to avoid the shells, if at all possible. And that's what brings us to our statistics. If we look, as you can see, we played two games. We lost two games. Um, it's Again, it's not that the ship itself is bad, and I, th I think this is probably the peak of the Italian destroyers, at least from what I've played. Uh, the tier five seems like the best of the tier, the, the Italian destroyer seems like it's got the best overall, um, package, but, uh, as you can see, doesn't relate to wins yet, but I'm sure if I play the ship more, you can see 64% main gun accuracy, 19% torpedo accuracy that because of the fact that I tend to just get up close and personal with the torps. Um, but still. Not good stat line, right? We're averaging 1,340 base XP, which is actually decent, especially when you factor in the fact that we've lost both of the games that we played. But overall, I think uh, if I played this ship more, I, I would definitely end up with a higher win rate, probably in the uh, 60 to 70% range, which is normal for me. Uh, but for my destroyers, I generally have a much higher win rate, and that, that's because of the fact that they have a much better overall impact on the game, whereas these Italians... Once they can get rid of the destroyer, that's fine. But then after that, they struggle with everything else. Armor, as always, you don't really have armor. You got 16 millimeters pretty much everywhere. So keep that in mind. Like, you're not going to be doing a lot of bouncing. But 16 millimeters is enough to bounce some guns, uh, especially light cruisers that decide to shoot AP at you. Um, you can definitely bounce that, no problem. So keep that in mind. For overview, you've got exhaust smoke generator. We've already talked about that. You have SAP shells. And we've already talked about the exposed, which means you have a very bad concealment. So we've we've talked about all three of these things. The Avietti. This ship belonged to the Soldati class, one of the most successful destroyer classes in the Abregia Marina. Owing to their increased size, the ships of this series could carry five main battery guns. Extended service, 1937, there were seven, or 19 in the series. And again, that showcases a, a successful ship design. Uh, but you also got to think of where these ships would be operating, which is the Mediterranean. It's uh, relatively shallow waters. Uh, it's going to be relatively close quarters most of the time if you do get into a fight. So having a very fast uh, gunboat platform is, is a good, good choice. Um, very, very good maneuverability, gunboat, so uh, it makes sense. And the fact that it was a successful design for the Italians uh, proves that. So uh, other than that, once again, it's not quite as bad as some of the, the ship classes out there. Uh, but the freeboard of the ship is pretty pretty substantial at the front, meaning that it's very easy in a knife fight for, for destroyers to land extremely nasty broadsides, especially from the Russians, especially from the uh, French, and especially from the Japanese, of all things. 
the Americans aren't really that big of a threat. I mean, yes, they have a lot of firepower, but at the same time, your SAP chews through their hit points in no time flat. So even though they have a really fast fire rate, your fire rate's good enough and your SAP is nasty enough that the Americans really aren't that big of a threat early on. At least not yet. Now, once you get up into the higher tiers, yes, they, they do become a threat because their DACA potential goes through the roof. But overall, if you look at the ship, it's a very nice looking destroyer. I do like the lines of this destroyer. I uh, wish the front didn't stick up so much, but I understand it. And uh, overall, um, it's a good looking, good looking ship. And like I said, you can see that gigantic citad or the, the gigantic center turret, which is a single turret for now, but it does eventually become a double turret. But this single turret, what happens is you have to have a barbette for that turret, right? So because of that, they make that platform much larger. You got to support the weight of the gun, but you also got to make it larger for the barbette so that you can send shells up to the gun with the elevator and all of that. So because of that, plus you have to have room for your, your crew to walk around it and do all the things that the crew does, right? But uh, because of that, that makes this rear turret for the torps abysmal. Like, it is so ungodly bad. Uh, and you can see that. Like, it's a very short destroyer in terms of overall, like, length. But uh, it, it's just, it, that, that rear turret for the torps is abysmal. And it makes yellowing destroyer, or yellowing battleships and stuff so incredibly annoying. But uh, with all of that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on Sea of Fortune, and we are in the Avietti. Now, like I said in my intro part of this video, I personally think that this is like the top of the effectiveness of the Italian Destroyer line, at least in terms of what I've been able to accomplish so far. Um, I think from here, they don't really gain anything, and everybody else gets a lot stronger. Um... And with the counters that you run into at Tier 7 specifically, uh, aka all the radars, the sonars, all of that, uh, I do feel like these ships really do drop off in their effectiveness. Now that's not saying that they can't be effective. And they actually very, very much are. Especially in a um, distraction. After you, like if you go early on and help get rid of destroyers, and then you fall back into a distraction. Uh, this ship, or the, this line really does come into its own. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the way people tend to play the Russian uh, destroyers. At least the mainline destroyers. Uh, going up to the Tashkent. Uh, they are very, very capable of removing destroyers. They're, they're decently tanky. Um, and once you get rid of the destroyers... Turning into, and obviously map control capturing bases and stuff like that, but once you get rid of the destroyers, turning your ship into a sort of uh, distraction to have enemies focus you while you're able to outmaneuver them at range uh, comes in clutch for your team. Uh, and that's something that I should have done better in this particular game. Uh, this game in particular is actually a very good showcase for the Italians uh, because it showcases all the goods that come with the Italians. Um, now... It's also going to showcase the bads that come with the Italian destroyers, but the goods at this point in the line outweigh the bads. Um, just due to the fact that these things are so very fast. Like, these things are insanely fast. You add that with that, that short duration, high um, output, uh, uh, what do you call it, engine boost, and... Uh, it, it really does allow you to pull some some weird some some situations off you wouldn't normally be able to pull off with some other destroyers, but at the same time, the one thing that I have to point out is that uh, these torpedoes are zoning torpedoes. They are not meant for uh, trying to engage directly, unless of course you're going for the yellow rush uh, on a target that's not likely to shoot you back, like a carrier. Um, do you, those sorts of those sorts of targets because everything else is going to be too maneuverable at any sort of medium range to really stop uh, like to really help your case uh, these torps are so slow uh, that it just takes forever to make anything happen but 
Zoning an area with torpedoes and the decent reload of the torpedoes. It's not great. It's it's two minutes uh, or a minute and 20 seconds. Sorry. Um, it's not great, but uh, zoning an area with torpedoes area denial is something that we've talked about multiple times. Uh, the one downside of trying to do that with these ships is you don't get a lot of them. Now, here we have six torpedoes, right? Uh, we're going to go ahead and use our smoke while we have somebody on my team actually helping spot. And we're going to showcase some of the SAP into the superstructure of the enemy Congo. But I get spotted here. Why am I getting spotted? Well, because this is a rolling smoke screen, each puff of the smoke actually goes away very quickly. And if you sit still, you actually end up getting spotted over and over again. Which is something that is rarely seen in, in uh, World of Warships Legends, but it is something to keep in mind. But this works two ways. Uh, it, it can work in the way of you can actually spot somebody as well. So if you're able to um, use the smoke and be stopped, when you get spotted, they get spotted, right? That's just how that works. Um, but smoke screens work both ways. And that's something that I think a lot of people just don't do well at remembering with the Italian destroyers. If you're all by your lonesome and there's nobody else to help spot and you trigger that smoke screen, you better be sure you know the direction of travel of the enemy ship and be ready to engage at a moment's notice. As soon as that smoke screen dissipates, you should be ready to destroy whatever you're up against. If you mistime it, you die. Now here, I'm not going to lie, this Katowski wakes up at the worst possible time. I had written this guy off as being AFK because he was. And the moment I actually commit to going after this guy, and this is absolutely like the worst possible timing. Like the moment that I commit to going out and finishing him off, he wakes up. And that's just no bueno for us. Um, so we, we immediately turn tail and start to try to run. Now fortunately for us, this guy is actually going to be shooting AP. Now what do we talk about with AP in this, this ship? It's got enough armor that as long as you're angled, AP ain't going to do crap from a cruiser. It's just not. You need more than uh, the ability to, to pin or overmatch 16 millimeters. And the Katowski does not have that. So we're shredding him with AP, or SAP, sorry, by shooting high up on the superstructure, trying to hit that upper side plating slash superstructure. And you can see we're doing decent damage. And in a situation like that, I actually would rather have the armor piercing. And that's where these ships really do struggle is with armor piercing. You don't have it. So SAP, while it does have its benefits, it also has very significant downsides in the fact that you don't citadel enemy ships and in situations where you need to up against say a light cruiser that's close range that you've just caught off guard you need to be able to finish that cruiser quickly and with other destroyers you'd be able to do that you load up the AP you citadel the crap out of them they're not able to kill you faster than you can kill them because you're doing significantly more damage per shot than they are at least at the lower tiers higher up tiers that's a whole other ballgame but uh, yeah one of the things that that really these ships struggle with is getting rid of everything else like destroyers not really a prop most destroyers that you run into you will shred with SAP I say most because there are a few exceptions uh, and also something to, to remember is uh, SAP does not do very well against a bow end destroyer so if you come into a situation where you use an SAP against the destroyer and they go bow in, you might want to switch to... Oh my god, that's a rock. Uh, you might want to switch to AG. Um, and then if, if you don't switch to AG, shoot for the superstructure. Believe it or not, destroyers have superstructure too. So make sure you, you shoot for that. Now here, I see that the enemy carrier is spotted. And all I can think of at this point is... Okay, this is a close game. We've already lost our carrier, which is a huge disadvantage. So instead of waiting for this carrier to continue to harass my team, as you can see, he's doing a, down in the bottom left corner of the map, I am actually going to put myself in a position to get rid of this ranger. Now, as I've stated, getting rid of a carrier usually is difficult because they see you coming. Now, he should know he's spotted at this point. We haven't been spotted yet, but we know that our detection range is 6.3 kilometers. We are also going very fast. Now, I trigger the engine boost early because I need to get out here as quickly as possible but while this guy's planes are still on the other side of the planet. So, once we get close to our detection range, we're going to trigger our smoke, which is going to allow us to stay hidden right up until we are on top of this man. 
right? Like that is that is the absolute best opportunity. And you can see at 6.3, we go ahead, we trigger it, we get spotted momentarily once the smoke comes, but notice he disappears. And this is exactly what I was talking about. Smoke screens work both ways. These rolling smokes are very good in certain situations, but in situations where the only thing spotting the enemy, it does tend to struggle. But here we have a stationary target. We know roughly where he's at. We've got perceptive, so we can keep an eye on where we know he's probably going to be. And once the smoke screen runs out, we'll be on top of him, and it'll be too late for him to really do anything about. Um, it is a carrier, after all. While they are fast, it takes them time to get up to speed. And uh, at this point, you can see we pop up. We are literally two kilometers away from this man. His secondary is immediately engaged. We turn out, launch the first set of torpedoes, and then we launch the second set. And, I mean, at this point, you, you guys are going to see just exactly what this is all about. Now, he launches, a, or his planes just got back just in time to watch his ship explode. Could you imagine being that plane that's landing on the deck of the plane? It's like, yep, we're, co we're cleared, coming in for landing. Oh my god, there's a destroyer attacking. S torpedoes in the water, torpedo, pull up, pull up, pull up. <laughs> and right as you land on the deck, the ship explodes. Like, that would be the most unfortunate timing you've ever seen in your life, right? Now, at this point, I'm feeling pretty confident. Our team's in a good position. We've got a cap. They've got a cap. I'm in a position where I can help grab the cap over here. We have a points lead. All our team has to do is play smart. Don't throw your ships away. I just got rid of the carrier. So now it is focus on enemy ships. But look at the amount of enemy ships that are together. There are three battleships and a cruiser. Now, our team has three battleships and a cruiser and a destroyer, which gives us the advantage. I'm going to go over here, try to grab the cap, put ourselves in a good position to um, give our team the advantage going into the end game. Uh, both teams very even right now. So having the maneuverability, the mobility to get around the map, unseen grab the caps and do what i gotta do is huge however this is where things start to take a turn for the worse rather than playing smart and sticking close together like the enemy is doing right now our team is going to spread out and they are worse than that they are going to go full broadside to everybody on the enemy team and look at the two battleships at the bravo cap they are literally full broadside to everybody on the enemy team. And that is no bueno. I know, I'm speaking Spanish out here in an Italian ship, but still, I see the Queen Elizabeth, right? And this is where these, these Italian ships struggle, man. It's like, I want to help my teammate here. So I would love to be able to throw these torpedoes out here, put them in a position. I'm expecting Queen Elizabeth to maybe slow down a little bit. So we, we torp ahead. We're torping the gap in between the B and the A cap because I'm thinking, okay, once he's done with this, and as you can see, one of our battleships is already dead. Shocker. And the other one's not long for this world because he's also broadside. Shocker. But I was hoping Queen Elizabeth would once he finishes them, go to try to go into the gap there at the B to A cap, right? That little gap in between the islands. Um, and so I put the torps out ahead of him, hoping that that would be enough to finish him off. And then I go ahead and try to wrap around the islands behind the enemy. Uh, we, get the we get the base cap. The enemy is already capturing Alpha, which is really unfortunate. Our team has left that behind. Um, we've lost two of our battleships or we've lost one of our battleships. The other one is probably severely injured by being broadside. We do hit the Queen Elizabeth, but because we, we anticipated him slowing down, he just outran the, the rear set of torps, which is really, really unfortunate. If I placed that second set of torps ahead, assuming that he was just going to charge straight through, um, then I think we had had a better chance here. Now, at this point, I played way too passively here. I should have attacked this rattlehead with everything I had. But because of the slow nature of these torpedoes, did you see how far we had to uh, lead this rattlehead? So that means if any point in the near future, if he changes anything about what he's doing, he just dodges the torps. And what does he do? He stops, he waits, and he just sits here next to this island. Now he's spotted. There are two battleships in a position to be able to easily counter him and nobody takes a shot at him. Our Texas goes down, our cruiser immediately follows, and that leaves a single battleship and me versus everyone still. Not a single person on the enemy team has been killed since I killed the carrier. 
we have thrown away ship after ship solely due to the fact that our team refuses to be able to kill anything. So, it's at this point that I'm like, okay, well, we'll try to help focus the Queen Elizabeth down. Maybe we can protect our battleship a little bit. But I end up overrunning the island because I'm anticipating the Rattlehead to come around the corner, right? Like, I'm anticipating him to come around the corner, and I don't need that fight in my life. He's got more hit points than I, I can deal with at the ranges that we would be dealing with him. So, I helped take the Queen Elizabeth down to nothing. Unfortunately, our battleship manages to put himself in a position where, while it is nice that he's safe, he can't shoot the Queen Elizabeth, so Queen Elizabeth is going to survive, which is really, really, really unfortunate. But worse than that, our battleship is then going to not only put himself in a position where he can't shoot anything right now to finish off the Queen Elizabeth, but then he's just going to sail out full broadside in front of everybody that's left on the enemy team. Now, we know that the enemy was at Alpha, right? So we know that they're likely to come through the gap. Now, you can see I get a shot over the island trying to hit the, uh, the Queen Elizabeth to finish him off. We only get one hit. The Rattlehead shows itself, so we go ahead and start trying to hit him with the SAP. And you can see, the SAP is very effective. Um, even shooting at a, a cruiser, we aim high, go for superstructure, upper side plating. We're doing 2,000 damage a salvo. Again, wish I had AP here, not gonna lie, because we'd be able to citadel this guy like nobody's business. But we're doing two to 3,000 damage every five to six seconds. Our battleship manages to finish him off, which is great. But unfortunately, it's too little too late. And not only that, it's even worse that he doesn't manage to kill the Queen Elizabeth off, and he's going to die in the process, meaning we lose this match. Because he's full broadside to every goddamn battleship on the enemy team. So he's not long for this world. We needed the, the kill on the Queen Elizabeth, and we don't get it. I come around the corner, and of course the Yuga is full freaking health. Like, how? How is it that we had so many ships in this game and there are still so many very healthy battleships left like that is unbelievably unfortunate but uh there's nothing we can do at this point we just go ahead we try to torp the yuga yuga is immediately going to change course we go ahead smoke up because it's the end of the game why not um we we did over a, a hundred thousand damage in a tier five destroyer with almost well with very little damage in terms of torps just because they don't do much but uh, we took out the carrier, we got top of the leaderboard, 1,683 base XP, two kills. It's just really unfortunate that our team threw as hard as they did at the end. If they had played with any sort of like strategy, where, whether it be staying together instead of splitting up, whether it be not just sailing flat broadside to everybody, I think that this would have been a win. But alas, it wasn't. So let me know what you guys think. Am I correct in thinking that the, uh, the Italian destroyers peak at tier 5? Let me know what your, your opinion is in the comments. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.